So right now, me and my fiance Jackie, we're meeting with my pastor Brian and his wife Heidi for biblical marriage counseling. Um, we typically meet with them once a month um, to discuss issues we might be having, um, and to just mainly um, just get prepared for marriage. Um, they're a couple who has great wisdom um, and is helped guide us and lead us through this whole process. So that's what y'all gonna see now. Oh. So guys, how you guys like our ginger at the house? You know, about that. Uh, I doubt we didn't do it. Two there. hours. Yeah, yeah, it was a little complicated. <laughs> uh, so, how's you guys week? It was cool. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Close. <laughs> <laughs> you guys do your toilet in the day, Tom? Huh? We did. Yay! And then, um, Not yesterday. Not yesterday? Yes, yeah, it was. We had each other. Just made up to that? Yeah, we had to for this video show. That's straight For it to be tensionless. Tensionless? Tensionless. Oh, tensionless. She's mad at me. You uh, mad at me too. I was. No, it's all it's all good right now. Yeah. How long is this gonna be? This video shoot right now? <laughs> <laughs> Low key, like me and Jackie, the relationship so far has not been easy by no stretch of the imagination. Um, I consistently went through rejection, you know what I'm saying, with Jackie, um, especially in the beginning of our relationship. It was really hard. Uh, we both had a lot of trust issues. Um, well, she didn't trust men. I didn't trust women. Um, but I think our trust issues probably was a little deeper than mine. I mean, and we clashed, we bumped heads. Um, yeah, and. Um, so I think, man, in marriage, I think it it, it kind of looks the same. I think by God's grace, it would get easier. But yeah, like, I guess having patience, um, consistently turning to the Lord for His grace, for me to have patience with somebody who's imperfect, and I think vice versa with her, um, to consistently turning to Him for, for guidance, for help, um, for humility, um, so I can love her. But Jackie dope, though, so it ain't that hard. Husbands love. Your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without a spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, that she might be holy without blemish. In the same way husbands should love the wives as in our own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. This passage is, is obviously painting a picture in the light of Christ love his relationship with his bride the church so Preston your role as a husband is primarily to do what love her love her what is what does that look like in everyday life um, yeah consistently giving myself up to far like Christ gave himself up to me mm -hmm. dying to myself trying to die to myself um, loving the past of falls of faults and perfections things of that nature. That's good. That's a good deep answer. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> Jackie, as a wife, what's your primary calling responsibility? M March 2nd, um, it will be, according to Paul, to submit. Okay. Cool. And even even the, uh, the idea of respecting him, right? Right. Uh, so what does that look like in, in everyday life? I think one of the most difficult um, aspects of marriage for me will be this this whole concept of vulnerability. Um, just coming from a background where men um, just always hurt you and could never be really trusted um, and to enter into this relationship that's supposed to be like super, like super emotionally um, naked. I think that's really scary for me, but it was deep is with that I think God always just encourages me with like a lack of vulnerability really keeps me from loving people the way Christ has called me to um, and so I think in marriage that that reality just will be even more deeper that I have to just continually meditate on the fact that I'm not only called to love God but my neighbor and my future husband is my neighbor um, though he is my husband and I think it honors God when I'm willing to sacrifice my self for the sake of the greater good for lack of a better word so yeah wives submit to your own husbands as to the lord for the husband is the head of the wife even as christ is the head of the church his body and in himself his savior 
um, now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives submit to you, submit and everything. Well, what are some ways you've, you've loved her this week? She like pissed me off, right? And then I had came back and I was like, you know what? I'm sorry. I apologize. Was it hard for you? Yeah, it was. Probably gets in the way. It's like it rises up. Yeah. It like, like right rise here. like up here. It kind of <laughs> cocked my arm back, but I didn't fall through with it. Yeah, yeah. Really? You feel me? It would have been yeah. cut. Right. Hmm. It would have been cut. In conflict, which one of us is willing, more willing to offer uh, an olive branch first? Olive branch is reconciliation for all those who don't know. They're using biblical language. Um, but yeah, like I think, I think I am. I think I'm the one who reconciles first in our relationship. To reconcile, usually it's Preston, because um, he, our personality types are different, so he's a lot more a communication oriented. Let's talk about this, get this stuff together. Me, I'm more like, let me process and uh, figure this out in my brain before I say anything. Um, so when it comes to just, olive oil makes me think of just anointing, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about conflict, right? So when it comes to conflict, he usually reconciles first. I think mainly because as a man, I think God calls me to, um, calls me to come to her to confess when I'm wrong, um, to confess when I, I've, I'm dealing with pride or um, just having issues, or when we have a disagreement, um, for me to lead her in every way. So. We have a disagreement. Um, even if I feel like she was wrong, um, even coming to her um, and, and confessing the things that I did wrong, um, it's displaying I mean, leading her in humility. So I feel like as a man, I'm called to, to reconcile first um, in, in, in most cases. Um, so yeah, I think I, I'll be the one who, who reconciles first. Can you ever divorce Jackie? <sighs> no, I don't think it's an option. I don't think that's an option. Okay. Personally. What if she stabs you in the middle of the night? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I would pray God would give me the grace to forgive her and we can move on. Mm -hmm. You know, probably have like dreams, nightmares after that, but yeah, I pray. I pray we move on. She goes, runs off with another dude. Grace. Grace. Yeah. I, I, I would have to, yeah. I would have to have a lot of grace okay. if she ever did that. Is divorce an option? Um, no, I honestly don't think that it is. Um, I, I believe that marriage is, is a, it's a covenant, a binding agreement between two people um, before, that, they, that they make before God. Um, so going into my marriage, man, I, I have that mindset that I'm marrying her, um, not just um, saying vows and, and promising Jackie that I would never leave her, but first it's a promise before God. Um, I read this book called Momentary Marriage by John Piper, and it really inspired me a whole lot. Um, in the book, he talks about how staying in love is not the same thing as staying in marriage, how marriage is a covenant between two people um, that one should honor, you know what I'm saying? primarily first before God and then to, to their spouse. Um, so yeah, like in marriage, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have our ups, we're gonna have our downs, uh, we're gonna have our hard times, we're gonna have our good times. Um, but I'm in a relationship with the Lord. He hasn't left me. He promised to, 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 to love me past my faults, past my flaws, um, past my imperfections. So I believe that's what marriage is. It's um, a mini replica of my relationship with um, the Lord. So. Yeah, it's, it's not a divorce. Divorce is not an option. For me, divorce isn't an option um, when I consider Christ's love for his church, his bride. Um, though there may be several circumstances and issues that other relationships have, all I can speak for is me and Preston. And I can just consider when I look at Christ's faithful love and how he, you know, consistently forgives and is gracious and merciful and um, good to those who, uh, turn their back on them consistently um, when I see that and that he's saying yo like you're gonna be with me until the other age period point blank um, when I see that and then I see divorce those are a contradiction um, so for me it's to death do us part appreciate y'all guys love you appreciate the Holy Ghost to you it's nice and strong
Just send it to Bell. Send it to Bell to you guys. Alrighty. Have a good week, guys. Make sure y'all fast now. Oh. Don't want no spirit of sorcery on. <laughs> Don't forget your homework. Let me make keep on two kids. Not right away though. I think we travel and just do too much ministry right now. You ready for you? Who ready for me? Jesus. Who do you think ready for you? <laughs> Brian, you? Show them the ring though. I want to boast on the ring that I bought you. That's not even godly though. I'm just saying though, it's nice. It's not even supposed to boast. If it broke me for two weeks straight, you I'm gonna boast on it. Just like Joe. Without that in your heart. Hold on though. Who are you talking to? Bye. <laughs> I want a divorce. That's fine. Hi, everybody. I hope you enjoy going behind the scenes to witness some of the premarital counseling with Preston and Jackie. Even though we saw them touch on a number of issues individually and with their pastor, Brian Dye, we want you to know that it takes much hard work and preparation to set the foundation for a good marriage. There are many more issues and scenarios they go through and in much more depth than what you see here. And in speaking to Preston and Jackie personally, they've had deep accountability and discipleship in their relationship since before they were even engaged. It's much more than what we can get into in a short video. And plus, we did not want to get all up in a business, as I'm sure you understand. Now, as it relates to the scenarios about one spouse stabbing another or cheating in a marriage, it may have seemed like it's all about grace no matter what your spouse does. Well, I know Brian and I personally and have eaten dinner with him and been to a pastoral conference with leaders in his ministry, and they believe in the whole Bible. Be assured that they know and we agree that domestic violence and infidelity have no place in any marriage. And at the same time, when bad things happen, reconciliation, restoration, and healing involves a careful, diligent process that any good pastor, like Brian is, would take a couple through. We hope this blesses you like it's a blessing us, and you let it encourage you to let God lead in your pursuit of marriage. And if you want to keep up with Jackie and Preston, just subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks. <laughs>